The Buffalo mayoral race has been getting national attention since India Walton won the Democratic primary back in June. Washington Post writer David Weigel was in Buffalo recently and he spent some time with both candidates for a piece that he published yesterday and he joins us now. Good evening, Dave. Good evening. Good to be here. Thank you. First, uh, we want to get your impressions of the two campaigns. We have a newcomer versus a 16 year incumbent and as candidates and personalities, they are quite different. Um, and did you see or hear anything in their campaigns that surprised you? Well, I'd been following you know, all, all the good coverage in Buffalo of, of the race. So I, I knew what to expect from uh, from both India Walton and from the mayor. Uh, the, the 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 bluntness was good. I mean, it, not not a surprise, but always appreciated when candidates are very blunt about what they think of each other, uh, how how fair they think the race has or hasn't been. Uh, and then in terms of their their support, uh, I was, I, I or their organization. Um, you could tell that Walton is 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 trying to build out from a network of progressive groups and the, and the mayor pointed this out as a, as a pejorative, you know, that there are organizations like the Working Families Party and People's Action that have been building and they, they've coalesced behind this campaign and it keeps expanding in a very grassroots way. They, the mayor's campaign is much more traditional. It is just uh, finding uh, support wherever he, he can get it, donations from the, across the aisle, from Republicans, from longtime donors, from people who are panicking because they, they worry about Indy Walton becoming mayor. Uh, so fewer surprises, more just the 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 amount of stuff happening along the lines that I I'd been reading about was was, was interesting to see. Yeah, it's been an interesting campaign to watch. Uh, really, none other like it. Uh, your story mm -hmm. in the Post yesterday pointed out an interesting dynamic for Mayor Brown in the old First Ward. You highlighted mm -hmm. some enthusiastic Brown supporters who normally would be right leaning in an election. Mm -hmm. What did that say to you? Well, and yeah, voters who uh, now he you know he's won big landslides every time he's been on the ballot in the general election, uh, but he has been challenged in the past, and he did better in East Buffalo, you know, the old grassroots organization, uh, his, the, the the political base he built in the first place, better there than uh, than in in the old first ward. Uh, but the reception, and this was at the halfway to St. Patrick's Day parade, what was joyous was really. Uh, uh, he was recognized everywhere. People were coming up to hug him. They were asking him to save them. Uh, there was one fellow didn't want to tell me his name, so I didn't use him in the story. But it, but he said he said that I'm a Republican. You're the only Democrat I'm going to vote for. And you did find people who were not enthused with him in the first place. And even I, I talked to some Republicans in Erie County outside Buffalo who said, "Well, I mean, I have not. Uh, this is them talking. They had I have no. I had nothing to, nice to say about Byron Brown before, but now, yeah, he's our only choice. So you did see that in his support. There is sincere support too. So um, from from Democrats too. I mean, uh, the, he is trying to build a coalition of I think a what they what still looks like in in the polling like a minority of the Democratic vote, but but a big big minority, a big chunk of it, and then." Uh, overwhelming support is what he's trying to get with independents, with Republicans. Uh, so you could see that he was on his way to, to that final part. It's harder with, with Democratic voters. I, I saw, I, I guess, a lack of, um, apart from activists, uh, people who were voting for India Walton, but uh, had voted for Brown in the past, generally I was finding people had good things to say about the last 16 years, uh, but they were frustrated with uh, how development had been done how economic inequality had not really come to come together uh and the they were willing to give india walton the chance but they weren't saying and, and byron brown's worst has ever happened to buffalo you know on the contrary they were saying of course the city's better than it was 16 years ago the argument i heard more was it's better than it's been but can't we can't we do a little bit more can't we pull resources differently and when walton emphasizing that she's open to raising taxes uh, incrementally i think three percent said i she said that came from the community. I mean, I found people saying in order to, for us to become a greater city, we need more of that investment. We can't just be depending on property taxes to fund the state budget or in this, in the case right now, uh, the money from the Amer American recovery act. So, uh, I, you, you found real stark differences, but as, as hot as the campaign between the two candidates went, you did see, um, uh, I think less, um, less vitriol from voters with the exception of some voters I met who were just adamantly afraid of India Walton of, of if she won. Let me ask you in the time spent with Walton, what was your sense of her supporters and her ability to get voters to embrace her vision for the city? Mm -hmm. uh, well, 
she's compelling and she she talks about her her life she even as 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 you know covered in the last couple months it, she has uh had encounters with the welfare system encounters with uh, uh p- police over over you know her car license and driving without it and she said and she she says uh, to voters she says in interviews yes she's she has the experience she's learned a lot over her life that she wants to implement for the city she she would be a mayor who understands those struggles more than uh, any mayor of buffalo ever has that's part of her message uh she she's very aware that the image of her pay, portrayed in campaign advertising and attacks is negative is that she can't deal with anybody uh and so you you often find people coming away saying oh she's very down to earth and she realizes she has to push back in some of those conceptions now there are people who have known about her work for a while or know about at least the development she's been trying to work on and uh see her right away and, and are, are fond of her and in terms of her own campaigning yes it's very it's about personal story but it's about specific things specific things neighborhoods need that she wants to she wants to bring in uh not much negativity about the mayor when she's when she's talking unless you know as you saw earlier earlier this month unless they're actually debating uh her focus is less on the the mayor's policies and more on what she would what she would do if she, if she led the city so you've covered politics a long time do you think there are national implications of this race and if so what will it mean if india walton wins and then what might it also say if mayor brown wins off the ballot uh it's a that's a good question because i think a victory for walton i believe would be a victory for either candidate would be a, a national story of some size more than the average race in buffalo which is as you know is fairly decided in june in the primary or we used to be in september uh so i think there if, if the mayor wins a writing campaign the story of how he did that is going to get some national attention but obviously the city based on what he's running on is not going to change the direction it was in uh if if india walton wins i think uh she's you can look at how republicans uh, around the country you know from from maine to florida to alaska run against alexandria ocasio cortez and she's just a member of congress congress she introduces bills she introduces amendments sometimes they pass I think you would hear Republicans go after India Walton and look for um, evidence that or or things that don't look like they're working as soon as she took office. So as in, from from November to January, within a couple of weeks, you'd see that you already started to see that from some Erie County Republicans. And I heard that worry there from some Repu- from some Democrats is one of their big priorities this year is is holding that majority in uh, in the in the county legislature. They they can see Republicans using the Indy Walton's um, very existence as a reason to get their voters out. Uh, and so I think you'd see that on a larger scale if she wins. The story of what happens in Buffalo, let's not leave that aside. I mean, uh, there has not been, uh, now there have been ma- mayors of Burlington, obviously Bernie Sanders, uh, the David, David Dinkins, former mayor of New York, uh, was a member of Democratic Socialists of America, but you've not seen somebody really run as a uh, socialist who wants to uh, transform uh, the way the city looks at things, create you know a community housing trust, raise taxes, uh, you know poli- attrition on hiring new police. There are a lot of very left wing experiments that you've not seen in a major city before. Um, even when Bernie Sanders in Burlington didn't see that, when um, more left wing, more socialist candidates uh, win elections in in cities, they're often on the city council, like in Seattle, and they're kind of pushing from the from inside the room, but in the minority. Uh, and you would have, I think, a a left-wing mayor with a lot with a lot of um, potential influence. So I think you'd see, it, it does how does the city work with her? Uh, how do Republicans oppose her? Do developers leave? Do police turn their backs on her as they do in Chicago and New York uh, when they're having conflict with the mayor? Uh, I think it would, it'd be an enormous national story uh, for quite a while if India Walton wins, and a story about where the Democratic Party is going if if the mayor wins as a writing candidate. You are familiar with Buffalo. You know people who are born and bred Buffalonians. Uh, And a lot of people say we have more of a Midwest sensibility than we do East Coast. So if India Walton should win, do you think this would be some sort of a litmus test on the status of the progressive movement? I think it would be, and that's fair to say. the this is a major project for the the rising left inside the democratic party and outs, outside the party itself i mean there's a reason that indy walton calls herself a democratic socialist and you tell me it's is that the, the the democratic party brand itself does not really have like a, a policy component that you can sell to people it doesn't mean a lot to everybody there are a lot of people who are cynical about it and she definitely wants if the democratic party is 
a majority party in Buffalo if it runs the city to be a more uh, socially democratic left wing party that is transforming the economy of, of the city. Uh, I think it would have a, you know real resonance if, if she's able to get elected and start pulling any of that off. All right, David Weigel from The Washington Post. Thank you so much for your insight. We appreciate your joining us and we've got a month left of uh, more than a month for this election. We'll check in with you later. Thank you. Thank you so much.